Hi, this is Pam, Pamela Gropi Art, and today we're in the studio again, and I'm going to show you how to frost wine glasses, or any glass, actually. I have two different methods, or um, uh, applicators, I guess is a better term, so that produces just a little bit of a different texture on each one, and you can choose the one you prefer for whatever design you are doing. Now this works on wine glasses, um, reclaimed, recycled glasses. I also um, started doing these little jars that you can get at the dollar store, Walmart. I found these at Dollar General. So um, they're available, widely available. If I can link to any on Amazon, I'll do that for you too. And the wine glasses are pretty expensive. I got mine at Walmart for, uh, for four glasses. Uh, they're Libby glasses. They are $5 for the four. So pretty inexpensive and easy to do. And of course, these are recycled Wii You'll Play yogurt little jars, which I thought were cute. So there you have it. Let's get started on frosting glasses. Now, first, the thing I do is I get, of course, the label cleaned off. And a lot of people use Goo Gone or other things. I used actually Citrus Solve, which really works fast and easy, and it's a citrus-based solvent. And then I'm going to come in after I've washed it with soap and water, and I take a bit of rubbing alcohol and a paper towel, clean paper towel, and I just clean it all off. And I make sure then that I don't get my fingers on the outside. And then I do the same with this one. And I just get it all cleaned off so that the paint can adhere well. Now I would sit and do a few of them and then let them dry. And then I come back in when they're dry. And it doesn't take very long. Alcohol, it actually um, evaporates very quickly. Some people have you wait hours or whatever. That's really not necessary. In fact, you can go back in and just wipe it with a clean paper towel if you want and then it takes care of it. Now, I like using this frosted glass medium. There's a plaid folk art one. There's um, the Martha Stewart sea glass, and um, there's one by Ceramco. And I tested all of the colors. I, I liked them all. I really did. And let me show you one that I finished. Now this yellow I thought would be really garish, but I actually really liked it. I ended up painting a rose and some rose buds on it with leaves, and I really like how it turned out. So now let's get to putting on our frosted glass surface. What I like to use is this nice pouncy sponge. The Plaid Folk Art makes these. I think there's also a Martha Stewart one that is similar. And I'm going to get my palette here so that I can put my paint on it. All right, here's my palette paper. And I'm going to put um, just a color down on it. One of the frosted glass pieces. You know, I really did like this one is sapphire. So I thought I would do another one. Here's the, the paint bottle. I shake it well. And then I give me a get me a puddle out on my palette paper. And then I just pounce in it and kind of offload some of the paint on my palette paper. Make sure it's not too gloppy. And then I put my fingers inside the jar and I just start tapping it on there. And I move it over, reload as I feel the need. And I continue to get it on there. Now you notice I'm not getting anything under the rim, but I'm not really concerned about that. You know me, I do things fast and easy, and it all comes out in the end. I guess if you really wanted to, you could really kind of concentrate up in there. But I like doing things really simply. And in the long run, it doesn't really show because the design you put on your piece is really the star of the show. So there we have it. If you want to put some around the top, you can. Now set it aside to dry, and I will do the same on this one. 
Now let me, I'm going to wipe off my sponge. I'm not necessarily going to completely clean it, but I am going to get the most of the paint off. I think I'm going to go into another color that's close. And, oh, look here, I, I must have gouged that off. That's easy to be fixed, but that can happen. This one is Ceram Coat South Seas, and I'm shaking the bottle. And then I'm going to put it over here. Now you can change out the sponge, you can wash out the sponge, but I wouldn't use a damp sponge. Um, it just doesn't cover well. So you would trade out your sponge. These aren't very inexpensive, so I have a bunch of them. So I would trade them out and let one dry after I washed it before I would move on to um, painting another glass if I was going to do that. Now I'm not sure about getting it on the rim here, if that would affect the ability to seal it. Let me, it might. So I'm going to avoid that and just go along here. Now this would take a smaller design to go on the bottom there. And that way I don't get it on the rim here to affect any type of seal. So there are my two jars painted. Now they will take a while to dry. I would give them, I gave them uh, 24 hours. So if you have a bunch you want to do, that would be the way to go. And then you can um, come back and paint your design later. So here's our glass. And I'm going to start on the bottom and work up. My frost medium, I have it out. I shake the bottle well. And then I have a puddle on my palette paper. I might have to get more, but I hope this isn't too loud. Tap it into the medium, and then I'm going to pounce it on here. Now you see it has texture. Um, I haven't been able to get a nice finish with a paintbrush. I prefer the pouncing, and the texture doesn't bother me. Now I have tried the spray on, like uh, Rust-Oleum and whatever, but they are not waterproof meaning these glasses can be washed because this is enamel. Even these colored frosts are enamel, and when you bake them there, then your glassware is washable. I do not suggest or recommend putting them in the dishwasher, even on the top rack. It For me, it just hasn't been um, a good thing, even after baking. But... This type of thing isn't hard to hand wash anyway. So now I always keep my paint at least a half inch. You can imagine where a person's mouth would touch from the rim of the glass because, you know, even though this is non-toxic, it's just, I don't know, something I wouldn't want to do. So I, I just kind of keep an eye on that as far as the top. If you want to draw yourself with a wax pencil, a line, so avoid getting it too far up, then go ahead. And I'm not making it perfectly straight across. This, this um, medium is kind of going up and around. It's just going to be part of the design on the glass. So there's your first one. I'm going to let that dry and then I will do another one while it's drying. Now I would recommend doing a bunch at once. And I mean, you know, line up four or five glasses, six glasses to paint and frost them all at once, set them aside to dry. I would give them 24 hours to dry. And that way you know they're good and dry and safe to paint on without lifting that coat of frost. So here again, I'm just gonna pounce on the frost medium. Now wine glasses are really a fun thing to paint. I've painted vases, oh, you know what? I'm just get, making marks from getting it against this palette paper. I was wondering what was happening. So here, I try not to touch the outside of the glass because your body oils will um, prevent it from sticking, adhering well. And it would make it where it would come off, you know, in washing, even after baking, if it wasn't, had it, didn't have good adherence. So, 
getting that all frosted. Now you notice this has a, a kind of a white transparent sheen. And I make it out some other glasses. I have more. And I showed you the one method with the large pouncer, sponge pouncer this size, on how to frost glass. And if you can see here, this is frosted, but it's very faint and doesn't have as much texture as this glass. And how I get that effect, um, if you don't want more texture, is I use a makeup sponge. Now this is dark, the stained, because I used it um, to stencil a sign with. I use these also to stencil and they work very well for that. But it has a finer texture than this one. So when you pounce on the frost medium, it does not have such um, a bubbly effect. Now I will do it on this jar for you. This is the larger size jar and I'm going to frost this little square part. Now let me get my supplies out and I will get started. Now I have this folk art enamel frost medium, a little daub of it on this. This is a Talenti jar lid and it just makes a nice little surface for me to pounce my little sponge in. I'm getting loading my sponge and I'm pouncing off the excess. And that just helps me to get a more even coat without a lot of texture. Now I'm going to come in and I'm going to try to stay within the square. Now this has been treated like I showed you before of how I um, treat glass or clean the glass so the medium will adhere well or paint. And then I just pounce it on using the sponge and I overlap the pounces so that I can work out any um, where it makes little lines where the edges are. So I just reload as I feel the need and I come right up to the edge. Being that this is a straight edge, it makes it nice to be able to get close to the edge of the jar. So I'm just going to keep pouncing it in, try to work out any of the little edges that may mark up and then I will let that dry. And that is how I do the second type of frost um, texture on glass. Now I'm going to move this aside and what if you want it to be a little more frosty? Then I would go over it. This is a coat I did last week. I'm just now getting back to it. And now I'm going to put a second coat on to make it a little more opaque. So not quite as transparent. So the second coat will help to do that. And there, like I said, I work it out, overlapping so that I don't have any obvious lines, or at least they're they're not too obvious. And that is the second way to get a nice, um, almost a no texture, it's just a frost film surface on your glass. And then you can come back and paint your design over that. And I, you can do this with the colors too. I guess I could show you on something. Let me get a jar. And I'm just going to pounce out onto a clean towel my sponge. I don't have to clean it out. I just have pounced the excess of that frost medium. And I'm going to go get a pretty pink. I think I have, this is pink and I'm just looking for, I have a bunch of these jars. I'm, okay, here it is. I'll use this jar. And I'll go over it. It's not cleaned, but this is just to show you and I'll wipe it off. So don't despair that it's not clean. Now I'm going to go right here with my frosted glass. This one is called Coral. This is a folk art color and it is really pretty on glass. But let's see how this works on this as opposed to the other texture. Now you see how much finer that is than the other one. Now I liked with the colors the more texture. Am I in the? Yes, I am in the camera. But if you want a finer texture, use these makeup sponges. Now you can get a whole package of these very inexpensively. I had got a package at a thrift store and then also I have found them at Walmart and Target and 
they last forever because like this one you see it's stained I had used it and rinsed it out and I've been reusing it I've probably been using this one probably a couple of years so they hold up you rarely have to buy more if you take care of them and wash them out and that one's pink though you can't really see right now the pink and there you have it the second way that I frost glass before I paint a design on it I will see you in the next video.